journals up to page 33. I'm going to preface it once again. This stuff is kind of weird today. Okay? It'll seem like, you're like, really, why are we doing this? And some of these statements don't even make any sense. They're not even like real, I mean, they're statements, but they're not statements that make any sense at all. Okay? Yeah, I'm telling you. Okay, so the essential question, when is a conditional statement true or false? First of all, you need to know what a conditional statement is. Okay, a conditional statement symbolized by P um, implies Q can be written as an if-then statement. Now, most of you have seen if-then statements. If-then, if this is true, or if this, then this. If you study, then you get better grades. Okay, usually true. Okay, not, not always. Depends on what you're studying. Maybe you're studying the wrong material. You're just not studying in a way that is conducive to the better grades. But if this says um, P is our hypothesis, Q is our conclusion. Okay? So if P, then Q. If a polygon is a triangle, that's our hypothesis, then the sum of its angle measures is 180. That's our conclusion. And in this case, is that a true statement? Does a triangle have an angle measure? All its angles add up to 180? Yeah. Okay. So that's a true statement. If we're determining its truth value, we'd say, hey, that's true. True. Okay. So what we're going to do in that first exploration, you guys are going to work together. You're going to spend a couple, couple minutes working on exploration one. All right. Determining true or false. Go ahead and work with your groupies there. People around you. Everyone. Here we go. Number or letter A. If yesterday was Wednesday, then today is Thursday. True or false? True. That is true, Amundo. Okay. How do we know it's true? Because yeah, because the day after Wednesday is always Thursday. I mean, that's how we know it's true. Okay. No. Letter B. If an angle is cute, then its measure is thirty. False. Yeah, it doesn't have to be 30. It could be any angle measure less than 90. So that is false. It could be any angle measure less than 90. Now, I'm not writing out the justification, but you guys should justify, right? Any angle less than 90 would work. Um, letter C, if a month has 30 days, then it is June. False. Give me a, give me a counter example. October. Oh. Yeah, September. 30 days has September. How's it go? 30 days. That's not right. I, I remember the knuckle thing. Here's the knuckle thing. Okay. January, February, March, April, May, June, July, August, September, October, November, December. Okay? So the upper knuckle has 31 days. In between your knuckles has 30 days or 28. January, February, March, April, May, June, July, August, September. Dude, this month only has 30 days? That's crazy. So, wait. So, like, you would switch it over and you would put the top No, not, not that spot right there. So crazy. Again, I, I, I can't point. Okay? You don't count this spot right here. So awesome. All right. Okay, that's beside the, that wasn't the purpose of the lesson. The answer is false, right? Okay, you two back there with, without any chairs, lean forward. Sorry, I was predicting the future. Okay. Yes. Letter D. If an even number is not divisible by 2, this one's tough. If an even number is not divisible by 2, then 9 is a perfect cube. False. The beginning half is false, the last half is true. Okay, th this is where you're like, huh? Okay, let's start with this. If an even number is not divisible by 2. Now first, can an even number not be divisible by 2? No. No. Then, 9 is a perfect cube. Can 9 be a perfect cube? Yes. What is a perfect cube? A perfect, what is, hey, let's let's go back to what we know. 
What's a perfect square? Yeah? Okay, a perfect square number. Yeah? Four. So like one, four, nine, 16, 25, those are all perfect squares. A perfect cube would be one. Two times two times two is? Eight. Three times three times three is what Dana keeps shouting. 27. Okay. Is nine a perfect cube? No. So this is false. This is false. So this statement is? False. It is true. What? They're both they're both false. Okay? So if you're saying if this false, then this false. That is true. They are both false. I know. Danica. They you're right. They you guys, the, there is no causation there. That's very true. No causation. Ha, however, you're saying a false statement is causing a false statement. That that right there, since this is a false and this is a false, you're saying if something doesn't occur, this something doesn't occur. They're, they're both false statements. Therefore, since they are both false statements, this is a true overall statement. Okay, now we're gonna. Hey guys, we will get to this. We will get to this in more detail in a while. I know it'll kind of mess up your mind. Okay, kind of if you want to think of it that way. Yeah, but we'll get we'll get to it. We'll get to we'll go into more detail. Okay. All right. Exploration number two. Work with your point or work with your partner. I want you guys to use these points. Um, notice it moves on to page thirty-four. The top of page thirty-four. Go ahead and work together on it right now, please. Okay, before we talk about these, please make sure that you are justifying. Why? Don't just put true or false. Make sure you're justifying why. Here we go. A, B, C, D. Or excuse me, A, B, C. A, B, and C is a right triangle. True or false? That is true. How do you know it's true? Oh, did I do the wrong one? Yeah. Unbelievable. You know what? I'm going to trace it over here. Actually, let me trace it in different colors. Thank you for pointing that out. A, B, C. That changes our answer, right? No. No. How come it's a right triangle? Good. Has a right angle. How do you know it's a right angle? Did you guys calculate the slopes? No, I saw the slopes. Isaac? Good, you have a horizontal line and a vertical line. And horizontal and vertical intersect at a right angle. Those of you who said there's a little square in the corner, dude, you can't use it. All right. Sorry. Next one, letter B. Triangle ABC is an equilateral triangle. Let's see. A. Oh, man. You did it again. B. D. C. Equilateral, yes? No. no. What what does equilateral mean? All sides are equal. Moon T, what do you think? Equal. All sides and all angles are equal. Good point. So uh, well, are any of those sides equal? It appears the two of them are. How can you prove? Moon T, what do you think? Okay, they're the same distance away, the same intersecting point. Notice this, that triangle I just traced right there is what type of triangle? Right. right triangle. Some of you are getting a little distracted right here. What I would expect is that you could actually calculate the length of these sides. Okay, so like when I'm looking at a right triangle, I know that A squared plus B squared equals C squared. So I could actually do the Pythagorean theorem on it and check it out. Now, I'm realizing that most of you probably did not do that. If I called this B, that would be 4 squared. If I called this A, 
that would be 5 squared. And I would then have C. That would be 25 and 16 equals C squared or 41 equals C squared. So C is root 41. Okay, now you could also use the distance formula to do all that as well. But I know this is root 41. This right here, notice that's also 4, and that's also 5, so this is also root 41. The question is, is this length root 41? No. No, what is that length? Yeah, that's 4, and that's 4, that's, that's 8. Is root 31 8, or root 41 8? No, this is not equilateral. How come? Because not all sides are equal. Danica? Well, because we're in coordinate geometry and we're not using a ruler for this. I know. There will be times, you guys, part of, part of geometry is that you have to use indirect measurement. And so when I'm out, hey Patrick, you paying attention? Not only do you distract me, because then I have to look over and see you guys talking, you distract the people around you. Okay, they're just too nice to say anything. So I say it for them. Okay, make sure you're paying attention. Okay, using indirect measurement, knowing how far something is from something else that you can't actually measure, like the distance across a, a lake or the distance from um, a point at one end of a campus to another point at another end of a campus, and there's a building in the middle. Okay, so that's kind of what you're thinking of when you're dealing with coordinate geometry. Okay, BDC is an isosceles triangle. Is this isosceles? Yes? Anyone want to volunteer? Tell me how you know it's isosceles. Jeremiah? Okay, two of the sides are the same. Root 41, root 41. Okay, so this one's yes. How about D? Quadrilateral B, A, B, C, D is a trapezoid. So this right here, A, B, C, D. Tell your neighbor what the definition of a trapezoid is. I don't know. Has four sides, but like not all of them are equal to each other. KJ, you know what a trapezoid is? Okay. Does that look like one? No. Looks like half of one. What? If, what if I drew this? Is is this a trapezoid? Yes. Yes. Now you guys are being very stereotypical. It'd be like me walking down the hall and saying. That's a teenager. Well, that's a teenager. That's a teenager. All those teenagers, they all look the same. They're all teenagers. Okay? Hey, I'd be I'd be right because the majority are teenagers. Okay? But this is a trapezoid. However, trapezoids don't always have to look like this. This is a trapezoid as well. What is the definition of a trapezoid? Yes. Good. Quadrilateral with only two parallel sides. So this side, AD, is parallel to BC because they're both horizontal lines. So yes, that is a trapezoid by definition. It's just not your typical trapezoid. Okay? All right. Quadrilateral ABCD is a parallelogram. Parallelogram. So is that a parallelogram? So if you, by the way, if you didn't know the definition of trapezoid, if you write it down, you remember it. You may never have to look at it again. Usually if you write down something, you at some point will recall that. Okay? It's part of the learning process. A parallelogram, for those of you who don't know, has more than one set of parallel lines, parallel sides. Yes? Good. A parallelogram has two sets of parallel sides. The typical parallelogram most of you reference is this one. You're like, that's the parallelogram every other parallelogram strives to be. Okay? Or, very true, the one that you actually see most often is either a rectangle or a square. That is a parallelogram as well. Okay? Two sets of parallel sides. Is that a parallelogram? A, B, C, D? No. It does not have two sets of parallel sides. Maddie? Why, when you draw it, you have like two arrows on one square, like, um, 
Oh, very good. Hey, these little markings that I keep drawing here, it's a great question. This says that this side is parallel to the other side with that one mark. And this one says it's parallel to the other side with those two marks. Now notice I can't make that a two mark and that a two mark because now it's saying this is parallel to that, which we know is not true. So in order to make this a true statement again, I'd have to have put like three marks. Now it's true. Again. Okay, good question. Other questions? All right, moving on. Exploration number three. Work with your partner. Off you go. No. Hey, remember to justify, you guys. Those of you who aren't justifying now, what will happen is on your test, you'll see those exact same instructions. And then don't forget to justify. You know how much credit you just lost? Half credit. And if you do that on every problem, dude, you get at least 50% if you get them all right. Yeah. If you don't get them all right, you get less than 50%. You don't want to do that. Practice your justification right now. Practice writing it down. Even though I'm not looking at this, it's important for you to write it down. All right, here we go. Letter A, if triangle ADC is a right triangle, then the Pythagorean theorem is valid. True, yes. Pythagorean theorem works on all right triangles. When it says it's valid, it's saying that A squared plus B squared will equal C squared, and that's true for every right triangle. Isn't it true for triangle? It's not true for every triangle. It only works on right triangles. Mm -hmm. But the triangle that we made out here in our question two was not a right triangle. This part of it was a right triangle. Letter B, if angle A and B are complementary, complementary means their sums add up to? 90. Remember the words, letter C, you draw that one line, complementary, it makes a 9. So this statement is? False. Complementary angles add up to 90 degrees. Letter C. If figure ABCD is a quadrilateral, then the sum of its angle measures is 180. False. How many? That's for a triangle, right? Quadrilateral actually has how many? 360. So if you didn't know that, now you know. We'll actually go through an experiment with that a little later, but 360. Yeah. Letter D, if ABC, so this is false, quadrilateral adds up to 360. Once again, I'm not writing justification right now. You should. It just take too long for me to write it out. Letter D, if points ABC are collinear, then they lie on the same line. That is true. Collinear points all line on the same line, A, B, and C. That is true. And letter E, if AB and BD intersect at one a point, then they form two pairs of vertical angles. AB and BD. Do they form two pairs of vertical angles? They always will. Ver lines that intersect always form opposite rays. Okay, and opposite rays, two sets of opposite rays, will form vertical angles. Yes? That, that's what I would say. It, any, well, I'd say anytime two lines intersect, they form a linear pair. Okay, a linear pair, remember, makes a straight line. And those two straight lines that intersect make vertical angles. Okay? Um, for, they form two opposite rays, probably. That's probably the better way to describe it. This opposite ray goes that way. This opposite ray goes that way. And making two sets of vertical angles. Okay, now you guys can summarize four and five on your own. But before you leave today, I need you to look at page 35, or excuse me, 38 of your student journal. On page 38, that is the extra practice. Now, there's some note pages in between there that we'll reference tomorrow. But what I'd like to do is you should be able to complete, for sure, 4, 5, and 6. I would like you to give 1, 2, and 3 a shot as well. Those are tougher. 
you may have to look at your notes. It is challenging you to think a bit, but it will help you be prepared for what we're going to talk about tomorrow. Is this homework? Okay. It's homework, yes. Do not spend more than a half hour on it. If you do, you're spending too much time. It doesn't mean you will finish in a half hour. It just means spend some focused time on it. Be ready for our discussion on it tomorrow, please. Okay? Questions? Very well done.